The coronavirus at the time of this recording has infected just over 1 million people worldwide, taking the lives of just under 70,000 of those infected. The good news is that 260,000 plus people have already recovered, so clearly the majority have been able to fight off this virus and regain their health. However, others haven't been as fortunate and unfortunately ultimately lost their battle to this nasty virus. As we know, the symptoms are flu-like, fever, cough, runny nose, and in more severe cases, shortness of breath. This is really the only symptom that separates the pandemic from the flu. And as great as it is to know if you're carrying the virus and how to protect or reduce the spread of bacteria, not enough people are talking about what the virus actually does to your body. Not the symptoms, but the actual biology of what it does to the inside of your body. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what happens to your body if you caught the coronavirus. How's it going, friends, and welcome back to LBQ. It's your boy from Quarantine Nation in the house, Jared Bronstein, and today we'll be talking about what few seem to be mentioning. What happens inside your body as you fight off this virus or disease, if it gets to that point. As always, make sure to stick around until the end of this one for some fun bonus content and share this video with someone you feel would enjoy it. Although this virus has been around since December, with some claims that it may have even infected a man back in November, You'd think we know almost everything about it, but still as the days and weeks go on, we're learning more and more about this aggressive, deadly virus that has officially turned the world upside down. At first, it was simply thought to be a nasty cold or even a flu, and then after a few weeks of multiple people coming in complaining about the same symptoms, doctors realized they weren't dealing with a seasonal flu, but instead something much more complex and dangerous. But we only know it's dangerous because that's what we're told. I'm not a scientist or doctor, and odds are you aren't either. So we rely on the medical professionals to tell us what's going on. They dumb the science down for us to understand because, again, I'm not one for medical terms. Not only do I have a tough time pronouncing them, as I'm sure you've realized if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, but I also don't always understand them. Thank God for Google. Either way, I'm going to do my very best to break down this virus in terms that you guys won't need to Google anything. Now, it's important to clarify and mention that the coronavirus and the disease it could lead to are different things. More specifically, this coronavirus, which has officially been named Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or for short, SARS-CoV-2, is one of many types of coronaviruses out there. Technically speaking, a coronavirus is a term used to describe a very common virus, which can range from a cold to SARS-CoV-2. The reason these viruses are given the name coronavirus is because under a microscope, the bacteria resembles that of a crown. SARS-CoV-2 is a specific coronavirus which can lead to COVID-19, a disease that attacks the respiratory system. Just to clarify, someone can't get COVID-19. First, they would have to be infected with the virus, SARS-CoV-2, and then that virus may or may not turn into the disease called COVID-19. The same way people can be infected with the virus HIV but never get AIDS, people can get the SARS-CoV-2 virus but may never actually get infected with COVID-19. Unfortunately, the general public, the press, and social media seem to have intertwined the two terms, so many confuse the two and think they're one and the same. They're definitely not, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have an understanding why. So to start, let's talk about the virus aspect of this pandemic, SARS-CoV-2. First off, how does one even catch the virus? Well, like the majority of bacteria, SARS-CoV-2 can infect you in many ways. Breathing in air from someone who recently coughed or sneezed will surely increase your odds of getting sick. Obviously, no one is going around breathing in people's coughs or sneezes, but if you unknowingly walk through where someone coughed a moment before or someone walking in front of you sneezes, you can't do much to get out of the way. Touching a surface that has recently been contaminated by someone who is already carrying the virus and then touching your face such as your nose, eyes, or mouth is also another way to almost guarantee yourself an infection. But even if the virus does get into your body, it's possible you don't get sick. Your body can fight off the infection and you wouldn't even know it. Although in more common cases, usually someone infected shows symptoms, and in the case of this coronavirus, as is the case with most, your symptoms would be as follows. A fever, cough, fatigue, runny nose, the common cold stuff. Once infected with the virus, you have an increased chance of not only contracting COVID-19, but really you're susceptible to all kinds of diseases, including pneumonia. Due to the fact that your immune system is currently fighting off a virus, in this case it would be SARS-CoV-2, automatically you're more susceptible to catching other illnesses or diseases. Under normal circumstances, your body would normally be able to focus on stopping the illness or disease before it gets serious, but if your body is already focused on combating the virus, it makes it easier for your body to get attacked by other bacteria. This is how one can then get infected with COVID-19, the disease which is known to lead to a respiratory tract infection. The disease can affect your upper respiratory tract, such as your sinuses, nose, and throat, or your lower respiratory tract, which includes your windpipe and lungs. As previously mentioned, the virus can also lead to pneumonia, as well as respiratory failure, and in the most serious of cases, death. 
The disease itself actually starts in your respiratory system and can lead to some very serious issues which may lead to hospitalization. Just because someone tests positive for the virus, doesn't necessarily mean they are going to contract the disease. As many of you know, people can get infected and not show symptoms for up to 5 days. Others may not show symptoms at all, but could still test positive for the virus. This is why social distancing and quarantining are so important to help stop the spread. So now that you know about the differences and how the illnesses can make one feel, Let's talk about what they actually do. SARS-CoV-2 is similar to any other type of coronavirus. Once the virus finds a way into somebody's body, or a host as they're referred to, it attaches itself to your healthy cells. Viruses aren't living, just surviving. Unlike an infection, viruses don't grow by themselves. They need your body's help. Your body produces cells every second of every day, but when one of the cells gets infected with the virus, your body isn't able to identify that immediately. So your body continues to reproduce and create cells as it normally would, which means it's also now helping replicate infected cells as well. This is how the virus portion spreads through your body. Once your body recognizes there are foreign cells now attacking, it tries to kill them. Unfortunately, during this process, your body also kills a lot of healthy cells, which throws off the entire balance of your biology and can lead to you feeling unwell. After the infection, the coronavirus disease referred to as COVID-19 can then start spreading as well. Starting in your respiratory tract, the disease tends to attack the same place as a regular cold would attack, the airway that connects your mouth, throat, nose, and lungs. Recently, it's been discovered that the viral proteins which cause the virus to enter your cells do so by breaking through what's referred to as the ACE2 receptors. In simple terms, the ACE2 receptors are enzymes in your body, and for some reason the virus finds that these enzymes are the easiest way to get into someone's system. Unfortunately, our lower airways, which include our lungs, are full of ACE2 receptors. This is how and why the virus tends to lead to the disease that attacks one's lungs. Some people may be able to fight off the disease themselves and eventually make a full recovery. Others who have underlying health issues or have had issues in the past, more specifically regarding the respiratory system, may have more complications. When the disease reaches your lower respiratory system, it becomes much more serious. At this point, it is possible and quite likely that the disease leads to other infections and viruses attacking your body. Many cases of COVID-19 have led to patients also getting pneumonia, which can cause your lungs to fill with fluid. The fluid can cause even more complications such as acute respiratory distress syndrome, also referred to as ARDS. As your lungs fill with fluid, it makes it harder for your body to supply your organs with oxygen. This is what leads to failing organs and eventually death. ARDS can be triggered by a handful of illnesses, including infections, trauma, and other diseases. COVID-19 isn't the only disease that can lead to the syndrome. And although these symptoms are most common, the disease can affect other parts of your body as well. Some cases have reported symptoms of people with nausea or diarrhea. Others have had issues with low blood pressure and irregular heart rhythms. Although it appears the disease doesn't directly attack the heart or stomach and intestines, it's still not pleasant for those dealing with the symptoms. The liver and kidneys are also two areas that the disease can negatively affect. Although it's unclear if the virus or disease can cause issues, or if it's possibly the drugs being used to treat patients that affect them. Some professionals even point to the fact that kidney and liver damage may come from other changes the body goes through while trying to combat the illness in the first place. So to wrap this one up, well, depending if you get just the virus or the virus which then turns into the disease, really depends on how your body is affected. One thing is for sure, we all need to keep listening to medical professionals while they try to get a handle on everything. Due to the fact that this is still a relatively new coronavirus, at least to humans, we're constantly learning more and more about it as the days go on. In fact, just recently they learned there could be two strains of the virus, but maybe we'll save that for another video. Until then, I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments section down below. Let me know your thoughts on our entire pandemic situation and how you think we could put an end to this craziness as well. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What happened to Carol Baskin's husband? Tiger King. Michael Terrell said Carol fed him to the Tigers. You know what? It's Everyone seems to think so. I don't know if she fed him to the Tigers, but I'm going to say she definitely knows what happened. She had some involvement. She knows what's good is what I'm going to say. Tall Joe YT Roblox said, what if all toilet paper was out for a month? Well, I think that's what we're going to see at this point because, you know, at least at my house, if you want to get documented, you know what happens. <laughs> Gear Jammer said, totally guilty. I agree. Guilty of knowing something. I don't know if she necessarily fed him to the Tigers, necessarily killed them. Maybe she hired somebody to kill him. She had something to do with it. I can't say for sure, but like, I think so, for sure. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You've been watching Life's Biggest Questions, and we'll see you guys in the next one.